Welcome even to today's episode of the X-Red Show, the talk show that gets you talking on the Xandermonium Network, live from New York City and London. I'm Xander Gibb. And I'm Ty Poligar in London. Oh, yes, three. On today's show, the hottest of topics. And in part two, Thomas S. Schmidt joins us. More to come in a mere moment. You can uh, join in the conversation around the live feed, and you can also tweet us. The tweet deeds are on the XFAT Facebook show page for today. Oh, yes, they are. Um, and you can um, make your comments, and we will involve you in the live feed. Sorry, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the teleprompter stopped, like, midstream. Uh, so welcome back to the show, Ty. How is the world with you? It's very good, thank you. Um, we're slowly approaching summer here in uh, in the lovely London, which is a bit of a change from as uh, well. Your listeners might not know anymore, but you know I spent many years in in Glasgow in sunny Scotland, um, where I'd still be wearing Wellingtons and a sweater, but it's quite nice here at <laughs> this time of year. Yeah. I, oh. <laughs> I really can't say anything uh, about the weather right now because it's been like eighty and ninety degrees here today, and and it's such a stark contrast from there being uh, from being really cold uh, to then going to uh, for then go for then going to like ninety degrees because it's just totally you you don't really? expect it you're not ready for it. I don't, I don't think anybody should for that. That's just bizarre, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like as, as, as hot as heck today, it really is. Um, but I, but I, I shouldn't complain, uh, because if it gets the contrast between it being freezing cold, uh, or boiling hot, um, I think, I think I'd probably prefer, uh, it, it to be warm, but it, it, you can't just get something that's kind of like just in between, can you? You know, something that's like, you know, perfect. What what does Justin Bieber have to do with it? Well, it's never right, it's never wrong, is it? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's middle of the road. It could be worse. It could be Sam Smith and be like totally, uh, you know, karaoke weather. Well, exactly. You never know who you're going to get, do you? Really? No, I no. You. I, I need to. I need to find somebody new to fix my door after this show. I'll, I'll have to find. Yeah, somebody. definitely. I mean, I mean, Sam Smith and Justin Bieber are always kind of good to victimize anyway, because um, I, 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 do you remember, did I tell you that somebody said to me, uh, oh, um, wouldn't you like to be able to sing as well as, as Sam Smith? And uh, after I'd stopped laughing uh, and picked them up off the floor, I was like, whatever, you know, because uh, I don't think the guy's yeah. got much. He doesn't have a lot of like variety in his voice, does he? Yes. Frankly, yeah. Um, but certainly, gone. but certainly but not yeah, the same. I have to find new people because there are lots of them out there. Yes. There are lots of new Muppets out there, aren't there? 
Exactly. Yeah, we can we can start with Bradley Manning. Uh, so, or should I say Chelsea Manning? But we will talk about him her uh, a little bit later. Um, so, how are things in the UK um, politically speaking? Um, I hear Theresa May's been in the news a lot this week um, from the perspective of uh, they're not so happy with her performance. Wait, sorry, so that began with who? Theresa oh, May. Or may Very. not. Um, she's. Um, we. I think we're. We're. Um, we may actually be approaching uh, revolution. We're, we're slowly becoming a fascist state. Really. Because um, we're now passing law, and now apparently she wants to pass a law uh, to control the internet. I don't quite know how that's going to work. Really, so you can only control the internet within the British borders. Does that work? Is that how the internet works? I don't think it does. Does it? No, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure you could control it just within that because you know you can be anywhere in the world and you can access any page, um, you know, from from yeah. the internet. But, but you know, um, for your listeners who, who aren't aware, they have passed a law now in the UK where all um, service providers are now legally required to retain all browser information from all their search users. Did it here too? So, um, we are now we are literally a nanny state now. We are a fascist state in that sense. So nobody states that we have no privacy, and we are the first country in the world to do this. Uh, and even though petitions, which went way past 100,000 signatures, which should have forced a second uh, debate in the House of Lords, uh, even though that happened, our government chose to ignore it and carry on and pass the law regardless. So we are now um, no longer listened to by our government. Um, and we have this, these laws in place that to basically suck up our privacy completely. So but not only can they follow every single move that we make legally and force, so this isn't just about following our, our uh, trail on the internet, this is forcing certain providers to record every single piece of our information. Right, and, that, and that's everything um, that every page you've looked at, um, everything that you've yeah. bought, um, and, and the ideology is that so they can then do what Mark Zuckerberg did with Facebook um, and, and sell your information on um, to people that, that, that might want to buy that information in order to be able to sell you other stuff. But I think that that is very disturbing. Well, no, actually, but what they think as well is it's so that no terrorist can hide anywhere. But of course it's not. It's, it's, it's George or it's Orwellian. It's complete control. Um, and it's and it will subdue. I mean, it, it, it's, it's fascist, um, and it's it's enforcing a, a, a way of life on people. It's taking away every single right you have as a human being. Eventually, it goes against everything. And now, what they want to do is control what is put out onto the internet. And of course, as long as we lie down and allow this to happen and say nothing, or just you know bitch about it, um, we will eventually turn wake up one morning and have no rights. But, but, uh, it, but and, and so you know we, we we need to fast approach we do um, a, 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 some kind of revolution and in this country although I did what what heartening thing I did see today on Facebook uh, and you don't see much heartening on Facebook for real is that over 1.1 million young people have registered to vote now in this country because no you, you can um, you can vote in, in Scotland now you can vote from the age of 16 and over I'm not sure whether you can in Britain England. Um, but because of what they've seen Theresa May and her government trying to do, they're now going out and making sure that they're registered to vote in June. Um, that basically they're making it very clear that they're voting against the Conservatives um, to get them out of power. But we've got to be careful here how you vote votes because if you don't vote strategically, you can vote them in even though you voted against them. Right. Uh, it, so so it's, all good. it's all getting very dangerous. But this woman is a maniac. She is evil to the core. As far as I'm concerned, and I use the word properly, by the way, I use the the word evil. In, 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 you, you didn't uh, use enough ease before. in the beginning. That that's the problem. It, yeah, and it's, it's just out of control. We are being taken over uh, from the inside out. She's talking about the, her also taxing the elderly. Uh, they're calling it the dementia tax here. So you're going to be taxed. You know, the elderly are going to be taxed because they're ill, basically. Um, so, yeah, so America, don't get too upset that Trump might be in, in debt with Russia. <laughs> but you might still be better place than we are right now. 
Well, I mean, I, I don't think he is. I mean, it's 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 been really it's been alleged so much um, about this Russian connection. I mean, they found a, they found a, a, about six cases of, um, of of Stali in in the in the basement at Trump Tower, and and that's the closest they've got to a Russian connection. Um, but the, the the concern for me is, and it's interesting, you know, having lived in both places, um, that the difference between I mean, when I lived in England, there was no way I could have ever been classified myself as a conservative, um, but conservatism in England and conservatism in America uh, are like two different things. And, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of like worlds apart. And, um, and basically, uh, you know, to, to even, to, to attempt to kind of look at the two in tandem um, is, 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 is eye-opening uh, because, because ultimately, uh, there's no, um, there's no correlation between the, 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 the UK's ideologies of conservatism and America's. Uh, and I found that amazing. Because obviously in, in America, uh, the Democrats are kind of equivalent to what we would call the Labour Party. Uh, but, but the conservatives yeah. are just totally different. Because you know, you know, the ideologies of, 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 of conservative, conservatism in the UK uh, were just so oppressive and, um, you know, um, only wanted to kind of support the middle class and, and, and upward. And, and, and anybody that, that didn't have any money, there was just no, there was no concern for them, you know. Well, that's still the same, except now I think the middle class as well have had it here. So the conservatives have become so oppressive here and so right wing that the middle classes here are seen as the lower class now. Um, and and they're, they're perhaps becoming knocked down into the dirt as well. But, it, but they are so oppressive now. And so, uh, it's 17, I think it, uh, this is terrible now, I forgot the statistic it was in my head, but 17 people in the country starved to death last year. And that to me is utterly terrifying, as well as heartbreaking, that in the United Kingdom, 17 people starved to death. Oh gosh. Now, every time I say that out loud, I hope somebody hears it and cringes. Because, but I, what terrifies me truly about that is somebody somewhere, and I know this to be true, because it's who we are, because somebody somewhere is thinking, oh, that's not that many. And that's what's scary. Right. that's where we've got to. It is. But, you know, a lot of these programs are, are really kind of... Um, they're, they're not set up well um, from the perspective of, you know, if you, if you earn a couple of dollars more than, um, than, than, than say, the, the, the ceiling point is, they won't help you at all. Um, and and, and of what are you supposed to do? Tell your employer to give you $2 less so that you can't get help from this, this, this scheme. Because nobody should be starving in 2017. You know, it's just... No. You know, it's Absolutely not. it's just you know it's ridiculous, um, but but you know we then um, kind of objecting to it. We then get in the realms of, uh, of 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 what's kind of deemed as you know social social programs. But I still don't believe that anybody should be starving in 2017, whichever way you look at it. But this is why, as well. I mean, actually, I think we're going to go to the story. It's been moved, isn't it? It's why the freedom freedom of, of information, the, 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 the idea that um, people should have access to all this knowledge is it, it, needed to be known because why would anybody know in Scotland, for example, the first, you know, where I live, I love Scotland. Um, I love Scottish people, they're amazing people. Um, and, you know, they have more food banks there in 1926 
So yeah, it, well, I mean, they're they are the, some of the bigger players, but you know, even Fox News, which is which has kind of traditionally been more conservative, is 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 very kind of like um, middle middle of the road uh, nowadays. I mean, recently they that that they fired they fired they're firing people left, right, and center of Fox. They they fired Roger uh, Roger Elise, who was you know one of the a, a big player you know in the in the controlling of Fox. Um, because people had accused him uh, of, of of sexual impropriety, uh, and, you know this guy died yesterday, and and you know only in America can you be fired from a job because someone says that they've that, 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 that you've touched them or that you've uh, you've said something to them that's sexually pr provocative. But the concern is for me that that what that does is that leaves everybody else wide open for people to just be able po to point the finger and say that person said this to me you know they, they did it to another fox person recently as well um so so obviously fox have got absolutely no idea um with regards to uh you know uh, innocent until proven guilty uh, and, and that's a concern for me uh, well Exactly. Exactly. And the concern, you know, the concern for me is, you know, this ideology of, of uh, innocent until proven guilty is clearly not the case of, of Fox. And, 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 and I'm really disappointed at the liberal media's response to this guy uh, who died yesterday, because, you know, regardless of what you've done or not done, you know, when you die, there's supposed to be a little bit of dignity in dying. And, you know, this guy's got a wife and a son and, 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 and the media just kind of like tore him apart yesterday. And that was, that was a huge concern to me because, you know, ultimately when people are behaving like that, when someone has died, just because they don't agree with their politics or they believe that they've done something, what does that say about us as, as, as the human race, uh, you know, it just absolutely and what's it got to do why are you screaming at their family when, right you know what did their family do about that but that but that brings you back to the, the, the jim jones and etc doesn't it and the and the lovely uh west Provaster church and etc it's that kind of mentality isn't it? the animal um it's a pack sorry mentality and, and it's let's just let's just hurt everybody and um and, and see what happens like throw the throw the razor blade into the room and uh, and see how many children pick it up it's it's, it's scary horrible behavior uh, and it's still it's still um sadly the, the mark of who we are and how far we've advanced which is not very yeah i mean do you remember that song um uh what was it called sleeping satellite you know that the lyrics of that kind yeah. of talk about that very thing and they oh, talk yeah. about how you know we've come so far you know that we can fly to the moon but we can't we can't kind of take care of one another and 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 be good human beings uh and to me that that is of grave uh that is of grave concern and and, and this guy's fat you know because let's face it you know if that was my dad that people were talking about i would be furious i really really would be yeah. furious and um regardless of what you thought this guy had done to actually uh, do this after the guys died was was just it, it was crap. It really was. It's also very cowardly, isn't it? As well, let's turn up when everybody's at their weakest point. Um, you know, and they're mourning and they're and, and they're they're in pain. Um, so let's go and let, let's attack them. Let's you know, it, it's just it, it, it's the lowest that we that we can um, that we can stoop to. I think. I I, I would totally. And, and here agree. we are. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, so we're going to change the tack a little bit and and uh, and move into a topic. But I just want to say uh, 
hi to people that are in the live feed. Um, hello to Michael, welcome. Hey to Gina. Uh, hi to Mark in Chicago. Hope you're doing good. Um, hi to Tony, uh, who's in the live feed. Uh, hey to Dave, welcome. Good evening to Zell. Uh, I think Connie's just joined us too. Uh, welcome to Connie. Uh, welcome to Raymond and James. And welcome to uh, everybody that's watching but not taking part in the conversation. Come and join in. We don't bite. Uh, you are more than welcome I to think. share. Yeah, yeah, Ty does, but but it, but he but he has had his vaccinations, haven't you? So you're not going to get any uh, uh, yes. nasty infections from the bite, are you? No, I'm fully inoculated. <laughs> good, good. Are you fully inoculated for East Coast or West Coast or both? Okay, well, right, let's move. Let's move swiftly on, uh, because WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange uh, is no longer the subject of an active rape investigation in Sweden, but he remains holed up in Ecuador's embassy in London, facing an unclear future because of uncertainty over whether American authorities will try to get him handed over next. Uh, so Sweden's top prosecutor dropped a long-running inquiry into the rape allegation against Assange uh, today, saying there was no way to detain or charge him in the foreseeable future because of his protected status inside the embassy. Now, prosecutor Marianne Nye said she could not judge whether the 45-year-old Australian native uh, was guilty or innocent. Did you notice how I, I, I resisted going into an Australian accent then? Uh, because the investigation had been thwarted. Uh, nice that the case could be reopened if Assange comes to Sweden uh, before the statute of limitations expires in 2020. Uh, but I'm sure Assange will be avoiding Sweden at all costs. Uh, British police said that they would arrest Assange if he leaves the embassy on a relatively minor charge of jumping bail. Uh, but the severe threat is a possible sealed U.S. indictment against him. Now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has suggested that the arrest of Assange could be an American priority, saying last month the U.S. was stepping up our efforts on all weeks. Uh, we will seek to put some people in jail, Sessions said. Uh, Army Private Chelsea Strat slash Bradley Manning uh, served seven years in jail in prison uh, in jail for giving classified material to WikiLeaks. Uh, she was freed on Wednesday, having had her sentence commuted by former President Barack Obama, biggest libtard of them all, uh, before he left office. Now, the concern of that is that this guy, people have died because of what Chelsea Manning did, um, but not only has she been let out early, but they're going to pay for a sexual reassignment surgery and they're going to give her all the health care benefits and she'll still be a, no an, a non-working soldier. Uh, so British officials said they do not comment on individual extradition cases. Um, British Prime Minister Theresa May, or may not, uh, said that any decision that is taken about UK action in relation to him would be an operational matter for the police. Now, I, I'm very torn about this, to be honest, um, from the perspective of, um, you know, if the stuff he shared was true, um, and, you know, clearly the stuff he was sharing in the election was true about Hillary Clinton because, because, it, because a lot of it was damaging. Why shouldn't he share it? But I have concerns about sharing stuff that's classified that could put people in danger. Am I, do I, am I worried about Hillary Clinton being put in danger? Absolutely not. Take a throw it to the dogs. I get that if you're releasing information that puts people's lives in danger, is it a crime? Well, why are their lives in danger in the first place? Who who is the original crime right. being perpetrated again? Okay, because just so we're clear, for any former service men and women listening and any current service men and women listening, you have my absolute respect, and that will not change. My brother is a former Marine. My father was a Marine in the Second World War. I understand where your calling comes from and I understand um, your sense of duty, okay? So this is not aimed at you. However, it is aimed at our government and it is aimed at the 
shows that I have the right to know what is being done in my name. It does not make them a traitor. It makes them somebody who is obligated, who feels that if they are obligated to release that information, then they're letting me know something that's going on in the world. Right. Now I can't have it both. I can't have it both ways. I either want the freedom of information. I want because I've just complained when we built the show. I complained about the fact that my government are trying to take information away from me and treat me like a monkey because they're saying it's good for me and we know it's not good for me they want to lie to me they want to steal from me income tax is a theft by the way ladies and gentlemen yes um and so you can't have it both ways so when somebody like julian assange who's lost seven years of his, he's, already, he's been in prison for seven years hasn't he? he's not been able to go near his family he's not been able to near his children right he's not been able to walk down the street for a free man um he's released this information to the world a lot of it I think we absolutely needed to know. He'd, he'd change the world by making that decision. Now, my, um, if people would put at risk, well, okay, so be it, frankly, because when we go to war, all those men and women are put at risk instantly. Right. So wh where's the balance there? So if people who are, you know, listening, phone in, whatever, whatever, however you want to do, please, you know, phone in and let's argue, let's discuss it. But um, I don't have a problem with that kind of information being released. And if your government, when they see that information being released, know that somebody's going to be in danger, then get them out of danger because you put them in it, not Julian. Sorry. Right. No. You. So, so tell me, um, please tell me you don't feel the same about uh, Chelsea Manning um, because Chelsea Manning what Chelsea Manning did was totally different and the reason Chelsea Manning was actually freed was because she said I'm trans and and that should not cancel out your wrongdoing right tell me about Chelsea Manning I don't know well, well Chelsea Manning was Bradley Manning and um, Bradley Manning um, was was in the armed forces um, and gave and gave a, a lot of this information to um, to WikiLeaks to Julian Assange, but the information was given was not just some of it was so classified that 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 it you know people were just you know suppose uh, put were put at, at great risk um, and some some even died um, because of it um, and and the problem the problem I have with that is you know. Um, Assange asked for clemency for, for Chelsea Manning and said he would surrender himself if that happened, but but that's not happened. But it seems to me <clears throat> that in America we have a two-tier justice system. You know, why should people like Christian Saucier, the Navy veteran, um, we talk about him a lot on this show, um, is, I think his wife is on the live feed right now, why should he be in jail for taking six six photos on a 40-year-old submarine um, but, but were never disseminated, but Hillary Clinton can walk free, you know, uh, Chelsea Manning can walk free because she's, uh, because she's now saying she's trans, and, and it means we have a two-tier justice system in this country, and that is of concern to me. Okay, but if anybody thought, if, if she released information knowingly, knowing that it would put people's lives at risk, yeah. that's a totally different thing. So that's not releasing information saying the public needs to know this is in their very best interest. That's releasing, interest, that's releasing information knowing they're putting people in harm's way. Yes. And if genuinely the, some idiot judge turned around and said, well, all the trans, let them set them free, I, I have no idea. It wasn't, it wasn't an idiot I judge, it, it was an idiot uh, president. It wasn't an idiot judge, it was an idiot president, it was Barack Obama. Oh, all right, okay. So, um, oh, okay. So, yeah, it wasn't an idiot then. So, Total idiot. Because somebody's trans, just because somebody's trans is no excuse for anything, um, other than possibly poor choice in footwear. But um, <laughs> I, I, I don't really, understand how how they could then go on to say well they're, they're um that, that that's an excuse for for um for, for for an early release if they put people's lives no if they knowingly put people's lives in jeopardy to to for their own benefit 
yes. I'm not really interested. I need to. I'm. I, I need to look more into that. To be perfectly in fact, I'm going to get back to that up next week if that's okay. I'm going sure. To more into this Absolutely. Manic. And and um, and the concern. The concern it, from. It was the Assange story that obviously we were talking about tonight. Yeah. I realized we were going to talk about this money. But this was um, this was related like stories, from. You know. Yeah, this was related from the perspective of that that it was. Um, that it was Manning that gave the uh, gave a lot of the information to to Assange, um, but but I think that in 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 fairness, my issue uh, and obviously I don't need to tell you this, uh, but my issue is not that this person is trans. My issue is that this person is treasonous and is a traitor, uh, and didn't serve their full time, and people died because of their deliberate carelessness. So that's my issue before all the trannies start, oh, can't call them trannies anymore. Before all the transsexual citizens start emailing and telling me how anti-trans I am and Caitlyn Jenner's gonna kill me and, and all of this, because really, you oh can- Oh my God. You can email oh, me at xandergib at I don't I give a crap com. I know, I mean, I know the, sorry, I mean, please don't think I'm ignorant as far as the information being passed to Assange, I, know, I am aware that is travel it's just the trans, it's the trans thing that, that concerns me but um um it, it, it's the it, it, it's been a while now it's the it's the intent to, with which the information was right that's over that i now need to go back and look at again having made the initial comment because i stand by my initial open statement on this story about how assange why assange released the information right Yeah. Oh, they just spat their dummy out. Um, and America wants to put some people in prison. When do when don't America want to put somebody in prison? And that's what Guantanamo is about, isn't it? If we don't find, if we don't like the look of you, we're going to pop you in there anyway. I mean, you know, it, it, you're an equally terrifying country as well as uh, you know, the UK and America have to be two of the scariest first world countries on the. Well, on behalf right? of on behalf of my fellow Americans, thank you for that analogy. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but you know, I mean, it, it's just—it's—it's it's absurd that you know they're dropping these kids. But if he steps out of this, you know, it—it's just—it's just so ridiculous. They're dropping cases, but if you step out, we're going to have you, Julian. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, there's so much. But I—I I think um, I do think that the Swedish thing was just a ploy, really. That was that was of just it was. that was just you know. Um, uh, that was just a, a made-up thing. Um, so, because because you see, once they got him in custody, this is why the this is why the Ecuadorian embassy said, "Come on, we'll let you come in here, and you come in here, and we'll we'll take care of yeah. you for the time being." Um, but he's been there for like seven years. I mean, he's having uh, he's having a, a relationship with that Baywatch, P uh, Pamela. Pamela Anderson apparently now she thinks he's gorgeous. Uh, so uh, we're going to start GoFundMe to get Pamela Anderson uh, an eye test, I think, uh, for starters, because you know he might be a great whistleblower, well, but he's not a classic beauty, is he? Let's face it. Well, she's knocking on the herself, Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I haven't seen her for a while, but but there's, there's a lot of dodginess going on with that, though, isn't it? When he was going to release certain things about Hillary Clinton, and um, wasn't it somebody trying to break into the embassy? and her harm is they arrested him it took the police yeah two hours to get there and in that meet and in that time they have managed to escape i mean are you serious in an embassy and nobody you know but, but nobody notices this nobody really comments on this then the world's press didn't really notice this much it's absurd it, it just goes on and on and on uh, yeah and in the, totally... the meantime you know nobody notices that um that miss clinton mrs clinton whatever the hell she is these days Bitch Clinton, we call her on this show. Getting away with murder. Yeah, literally, Seth Rich. The list is endless. We actually yeah. call her. We don't. We don't refer to it so so. Uh, you know, uh, in such uh, grandiose uh, uh, terms, we call her Bitch Clinton on this show because you know she's the epitome of uh, of bitches. And um, the sooner that woman gets justice, uh, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but our guest is going to be here any minute, so I want to start the introductions. Um, before uh, I uh, bring him, before I call him, Hello. even. Hello? Hi. 
Hi, I thought you were going to say something. No. Ah. Oh, I probably will. But... <laughs> no, I stopped because I thought you were going to say something. So our guest tonight is my Monday night co-host. Uh, his name is uh, Thomas S. Schmitz. He's a, a writer, a editor, and contributor for conservatives for Palin. Uh, he's a broadcaster, and he's also a good buddy of mine. So let's get him on the line. And... Um, which kind of restaurant should we say we're calling from tonight? What do you think? Kind with eat, I think, really. Good evening. Uh, yes, hello, we have your delivery. Can you come to the door? No, I will not come <sighs> to the door. Well, we put it under the door then. You pay now. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome back to the show. Uh, Thomas S. Schmitz, how is the world with you, sir? You're live with myself and Ty Paul Egar, welcome back. Hey guys, what's going on tonight? Well, we've just been discussing... Hey, how are you? I... Go ahead. I'm good, thank you for asking. I think that was just possibly the most racist opening to an introduction ever, Thomas. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well, and how are you? I'm good. Just, okay. just... No, there's not a delay. It's just, it's just that the the Thai takes time to respond. Uh, that, oh, okay. That's what it is. He's 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 busy eating Taiwanese food, I reckon, um, which uh -huh. which is probably the reason for it. Not really. I'm just I'm just joking. I am a comedian, you know. Um, so we were just discussing um, the Julian Assange stuff today. Um, before we move into other matters, uh, what's your take on it? Because Sweden basically said that they weren't gonna. Um, they weren't going to go on with this this fake rape allegation anymore because there was no way they were ever going to be able to arrest him for it. Um, and obviously the ramifications of this week that um, that Chelsea Manning was released um, and is going to get all her surgery paid for by you and I, the taxpayer. Uh, so what do you make of this, Thomas? Um, I don't know what to make of it because the Assange story when it happened in Sweden just seems peculiar to me at yeah. the time. And one of the most interesting things I think about Julian Assange is, you know, when it first happened with the WikiLeaks, what was it, five, six years ago, you know, the Democrats loved him and it was the Republicans who had a problem with him. And then, right. of course, during the election, you know, that flipped. And so I, nobody really knows where to stand on uh, Julian and Assange. I think it's uh, um, unfortunate that a lot of uh, dishonest reporters uh, frame uh, WikiLeaks as hackers when they're not hackers, they're publishers of yeah. information that is given to them. And so it's not hacking, you know, it's just publishing information. Absolutely. So it, it's a very strange and unfortunate uh, case and we'll have to see how it pans out. Absolutely. Uh, I, would, I would totally agree. Uh, I would totally agree uh, with that. Um, so I want to uh, just touch very briefly uh, on the fact that um, uh, Roger Ailes died this week from, from Fox News. And the level of response from the uh, liberal media was pretty crap, actually. Uh, and we were talking a little bit about this earlier on. Um, is, is this something we've come to just expect uh, from the liberal media? Should it be... Uh, something that uh we we should just just accept well i don't see that we have much of a choice but i mean i was yet again shocked at the amount of democrats on social media yesterday yesterday celebrating yes. his death and saying oh good i'm glad he died i hope it hurt you know that kind of stuff and you know it, when it goes the other way, when a Democrat, you know, dies, you know, we don't get online and start saying, yay, yay, yay. No. You know, that's one of the biggest differences between the two parties, and perhaps that's why there's no Democrats on Mount Rushmore. Right. Because of the, this type of behavior. I have to ask you this, though. Uh, you know, you know, God forbid, and may she live a thousand seconds. If Hillary died tomorrow, do you think that there would be a dance party uh, going on? <laughs> No, I don't. I mean, not not from our side. I mean, I just can't 
imagine anyone celebrating the death of someone they disagree with. It's just such a right. foreign com concept to me. Right. But unfortunately, on the other side, you see that when people on our side die or are sick. You know, every time Dick Cheney goes into the hospital, you know, you can go on social media and there it is. Oh, I hope it hurts. I hope he dies this time. Uh, yeah. Later on, it. good. He deserves it. Da -da 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 -da. But you know. When someone on their side goes to the hospital, we kind of wish them well and hope they get better. And you see that on social media, you know, and the percentages are just off the charts, you know, to the left, you know, their celebration of death is just absolutely astonishing when it happens to someone on our side. It's Wait. really, it's just so foreign to me. I don't understand that, that way of thinking. But that's exactly what I was saying earlier. It's just that we, we know, and I can't remember the name now, but everybody will know uh, when, the, and it's just an, uh, the analogy I'm making, it's exactly the same as we did when the leader of the Westbrook Baptist Church died. Fred West. Fred um, uh, Phelps. Fred West. Fred West. Sorry, sorry. Fred Phelps. <laughs> Fred West was the builder that chopped people up and Fred put them West. in his yeah, basement. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he murdered people. But anyway, the family said, please allow us to bury our father, you know, our, our father with dignity. Um, and don't don't invade the funeral, even though he actively terrorised yes. people's um, family funerals, soldiers' funerals, etc. And and what did the gay community do? We left him alone, and we allowed his family to do just what they asked him to do. And that's the difference, isn't it? It's called you know being a civilised human being. Yes. And it takes it sets it apart, as they say, from the animals, which is frankly I think an insult to animals because no animal behaves like a human being. No. But um. But it, but it is, it just shows you where the dignity lies and where the strength lies and where the self-respect lies and where, where, where the true, um, where the true uh, humanity lies, I think. When somebody can stand up and say, I hope it hurts, I hope they die slowly, I hope it... What does that tell you about that person? It, it tells you everything you need to know about that person. It, it really does, you're absolutely right. And I want to change the direction because of, uh, just, just because of time factors. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, I don't know if you know this, but James Comey uh, has done everything but get himself an agent because he's trying to get on all the primetime shows this week. Uh, and James Comey, if, if you don't know, Ty, is the, uh, the, the ex-head of the FBI who was fired by Donald yeah. Trump. And now this guy is so disgruntled, you know, he wants to go on Black and uh, the Donald's name um, and is trying to get on every TV a, show it, that he can. Go ahead. It's a huge headline. It's a huge headline at, at the moment. Actually, all uh, last yesterday evening, I should say, in the UK, it's just one huge headline. They're just trying to trash Trump with this, with this guy at the minute here. So it, that's all we're talking about. Absolutely. Um, so what, what do you make of this, uh, Thomas? Um, obviously, this is just sour grapes, um, but but is it going to do any good? Oh, it won't do any good, um, except in one area. And the area that it will do good for our side is that the longer the Democrats push this Russia conspiracy, it really risks degrading the Democrat Party. Right. And Louise Mensch, and she had no proof. It was not true. 
Yeah. And then, you know, so these people who are still angry about the election, they see, you know, the senator's statement, and they just start hitting retweet or share or whatever. And yeah. And pretty soon you've whipped up people into this frenzy. And it's like, again, if you're on their side, you know, you're guilty of giving them false hope. And so when this all comes uh, out and we, we see that, again, we all know this, but there's no there there, you know, they're just going to be all upset and enraged all over again. And so it's really going to make them look even more foolish in the way they're behaving right now. Yeah. Because, you know, the FBI said, director served the at the pressure of, of, the, of the president. And Comey's, he has even said that, you know, and he's on record as saying that, that the FBI can, director can be fired for any reason or no reason at all. Yes. And he's on record saying that. So, uh, you know, I don't understand. Um, well, I do understand what's going on. You know, it's political. And it just shows that the Democrats still haven't gotten over the election. No. And I think the concern really, you know, I've even heard this week, you know, I've had people, you know, famous people actually DMing me and saying, Xander, you know, you come need to come over to our side because because the president is mentally ill. And I'm like, yeah, but we got rid of Obama and now we've got Trump. So it's all good. Uh, but it's actually scary, the stories that people are putting out there. But what is even scarier is I don't share something now until I've read it. Because the danger is uh, that you can share something and, and it not be true. Um, and, you know, as I host a show, you know, I host a TV show and, and I host this show, uh, I have to be very careful that I'm not putting fake information out there. Because the concern is my integrity is more important than a share for, for, for a quick... Um, you know, for a quick thrill um, about about a story, uh, and it's it's concerning that other people don't see it that way too. Yeah, people are only reading headlines and going off that, and then when they read the story, they don't they don't read the words. You know, may have said or yeah. someone close to the intel community may have seen a paper that could have said you know X Y Z. And people are just sharing this and going as if it's the gospel. But re when you really read it, again, there's no there there. Right. It's really destructive for the country because there's so many more important things that the Congress uh, could be working on. It's such a distraction. You know, there, there are serious problems in the country, and this is just overshadowing all of that, which is probably why they're doing that. Uh, but, you know, the people aren't stupid. You know, one of the reasons that the president was elected was a lot of people didn't vote for Trump. They voted against the media. Yes. And the media still doesn't get that. And they're behaving even worse than they were during the election. And that's not going to sit well with the American people. You know, when you look at the president's poll numbers now in the swing states like Pennsylvania and Ohio, he's up from Election Day. And not just by small margins, by big margins, eight points, nine points. You know, he's up. The people are paying attention and they don't like what they're hearing. And they don't like it from the media and they don't like it from the Democrats. So, you know, I have mixed feelings about this because, you know, maybe this is a good way to just put the Democrats out into the woods with Hillary for quite a long time and yeah. they can get down to work and, and turn this ship around. But then on the other hand, it doesn't help unite the country. It just for no. divides the country and that is a big issue. Uh, but I'm not sure that they want that. Go ahead, Ty. You were going to say something. Uh, well, what I was going to say is I think that nobody, by the way, up here is buying it. They just keep seeing these big red headlines, you know, Russian connection, blah, blah. Nobody is interested. Nobody in the UK is buying it. Nobody is interested. They know it's rubbish. But also, I think the problem you have with 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 uh, Mr. Trump is he's not the politician, or he's not a long-term politician. So he's come into the White House. You know, as a businessman, he makes statements that the press know that they can pick up on because he's speaking as you or I would speak, as just a human being, and saying 
decide to all of a sudden have a president who doesn't talk like presidents ever have. But uh, I, you know, no, it's, absolutely. But it's not a criticism. But Thomas, it's not a criticism. As it's quite the reverse. That's what I'm saying. I think people are actually hearing another human being speaking back at them, right. not a lifetime politician. And but pressing using that to their advantage. But as you've just said, people are actually warming to it, so it, it is backfiring. So the only thing they have right now are to use these ridiculous statements, yeah. these ridiculous uh, accusations to, to to try and put their wedge in the door, as it were. And it's not working because people are just not buying it. You know, nobody in the UK thinks that he's in bed with the Russians. But, uh, you know, I mean, nobody cares. Nobody's even she, paying attention to those headlines. She's Slovenian, isn't she? Isn't she Slovenian? He's not in bed with a Russian. She's Slovenian, I think. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? I mean just, absolutely. Just, just nobody's buying it. Nobody's interested. I just think yeah, that... You know what else is interesting is the left and the media are kind of perpetuating this imaginary rule that the president is not allowed to have any communication whatsoever yeah. with the country of Russia. Now, how can that be a good thing? We're not supposed to talk to one of the major world powers? Great, like, great point. What's that all let about? Me, let me just ask you this, Thomas, because I think this is really relevant. Now, they beat... The, they beat Mr. Trump up this week again because they're saying he shared classified information with Russia. Now, now here, here's exactly what he did. He was he'd had intel to say that ISIS were planning to put bombs in laptops on Russian airliners. So how how is he supposed to just say nothing about that fact? And how is that classified intel if it helps? to stop any Russians being killed. You know, I dare you, Democrats, to, to, to even waver a response to that. Because Russia is not the enemy right now. They might have been in the past. The Cold War is over, comrade. So if you have information that can save someone's life, even Russians' lives, then you should do that. Because first and foremost, our president is a human being. You know, he's the president's secondary. Uh, and I think that he absolutely did the right thing by telling them that. Because, you know, I would have been pissed if he'd had the information and a whole Russian airliner went down and people were killed and he could have done something about it. Because you know what? They would have criticized him for that too. Oh, they would have. Oh, and also, you know, people are forgetting or maybe they're not perhaps or more than likely not forgetting it's the sin of omission. You know, he's the president of the United States. If he decides something is unclassified that was classified, he can do that. You know, the buck stops at his Yes. If he, he, he has that power. He can say this is no longer uh, classified. It's now unclassified. And he has every right to do so. But you don't hear that in the media. No, no. Because, no. because you know, the thing is that people... When people say he's not presidential, well, you know, what we've had a community organizer in this in the in the office of president for the last eight years, and I don't think Barack Obama's behavior was necessarily presidential. And when this house of cards that him and Hillary built falls apart, we will actually see how unpresidential um, Obama was. And I look forward to it because you know what? I've already got my name down on the list to be prison pen pals with Barack and Hillary because I will write to them every week and tell them what fools they are. And I hope a lot of other conservatives will too. Oh yeah, you know, the, the Democrats are playing a very dangerous game with requesting all this information. Yep. It looks like, you know, some of the information they got today is not going to make Loretta Lynch uh, very happy, the former uh, Attorney General. And, um, uh, you know, they were it was specific to that famous tarmac meeting right before Comey uh, came out and said Hillary Clinton should not be uh, indicted. You know, when President Clinton and the uh, Attorney General uh, met on the tarmac at an airplane, and, on an airplane, and allegedly discussed golf and their grandkids. And, you know, that information is coming out, too. And so, you know, this could end very, very badly for the Democrats and the media. Now, be fair, but Thomas. Kennedy they was they... right when he said the media is the opposition party. He couldn't have been more correct with that statement. But be fair, Thomas. They did discuss grandchildren, but the conversation went like this. Loretta... If you don't get my wife off this, I'm going to kill your grandchildren. Yeah, it could say that. We don't know. 
Uh, so sue me if it's not true. Um, and also, Bill, if you're listening, you're a rapist. Uh, we are... Uh, I didn't say which Bill, though, did I? I could have been talking about Cosby. Uh, so sue me. You know, you can't get blood out of a stone. We are out of time. Uh, thanks to everyone who has made today's fabulous show possible. Uh, before I do the outro information, please click share now. It costs you nothing to do it. Press that share button. Share, share, share. If I could make you share, whoa. Uh, so thank you. I don't know what came over me there. Um, don't have to do that again. Okay. Whoa. Thank you to uh, our fabulous guest, Mr. Thomas Ash Smith. Tell people where they can find you, Thomas. Oh, it's easy to find me. I can be found on Twitter at, at Thomas S. Schmitz, at T-H-O-M-A-S-S-S-C-H-M-I-T-Z, at Thomas S. Schmitz on Twitter. And I can be found as an editor and contributor at www.conservativesforpalin.com. That's the number four, conservativesforpalin.com. Twitter at Thomas S. Schmitz. Absolutely. And Thomas will be back with us on Monday as my co-host. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, uh, Thomas, and give uh, love to Jim. I will do that. Good talk with both of you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend, you guys. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. And thanks to my wonderfully talented co-host, Ty Paul Eager. Tell people where they can find you. Uh, Ty? Oh, hello. Folks. Docklands Light guess, Railway. It, 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 it just takes you up to say my name. This is, uh, although some of this that is at Ty Paul Eager. Um, T-Y-H-E-P-A-U-L-E-G-A-R. Capital P, capital P, capital P. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, Yes, you will find him there too. Uh, so thank you very much, Ty. Have a wonderful weekend. We will speak to you very soon. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. That was Ty Paul Egon. Make sure you check him out. All of his contact information is on the Hatchrad Facebook show page for today. Now stick around right after this because I'll be on the real side. That's three shows tonight. Uh, make sure you stick around and uh, listen to me there. That's the real side. Thanks to everyone in the live feed. Uh, thanks for sharing. Please, uh, please click the share button before you go. I don't know why people have this aversion to the share button. Click share now. I really do love you all. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay warm and uh, we will be back with you same time same place on Monday bye bye